show, a Sunday night look at the teams you really care about. And now, here's Tamara Jolie. All right, the Colts are now headed back to the NFL title game for the second time in four years and their fourth Super Bowl in franchise history. That's what victory looks and sounds like. The last time Tyler Lee beat Garland, they went on to win the state title in 2004. But head coach Mike Owen says they're taking it one game at a time. To go, the Dallas Cowboys appear to be one of the top teams in the NFL. But what in the world has happened to the Dallas offense? This afternoon, the boys barely beat the Redskins 7-6 the final. In case you didn't stay awake through the whole thing, don't worry, I don't blame you. Joining me right now is Derek Rush, the head coach of John Tyler. John Tyler's off to a great start this year. We'll talk about football in just a moment. But first, coach, it's been such a hard week for you and your players. Talk about how you just had to turn around and focus on the game tonight after everything y'all went through. Receiver Jordan Shipley seldom likes to talk about himself, but even Shipley had to acknowledge he had the best day ever by UT receiver. Well, finally, it's a done deal. Tom Hicks has agreed to sell the Texas Rangers to a group that includes Hall of Fame pitcher Nolan Ryan. Hicker, you know, you can really be a hero or a zero. He was definitely a hero tonight. Well, the Colts are now headed back to the NFL title game for the second time in four years and their fourth Super Bowl in franchise history. Better yet, they're heading back to their lucky city, Miami, where they've played all four of those games. Where Jets were up early 17-6, and you know, it looked like their Cinderella run may continue, but Peyton Manning with a 16-yard touchdown pass to Austin Coley makes it Jets 17-14. A huge game against number 13 Oklahoma State, the Big 12 South title at stake, and the Longhorns were looking to keep their perfect season intact. Well, high school playoffs continue today. We'll head to Dallas first in Class 4A, where undefeated Waxahachie and Long you faced off. Abby, you said that you're crying today. What well, the world crying. happened to okay, your Okay, I can this year's version of the Robert E. Lee and John Tyler High School football game will forever be remembered as one of the greatest upsets. The Red Raiders exploded from the start when a freshman from Lee, LaQuintus Wallace, returned the opening kickoff for a 95-yard touchdown. What were those sports that we saw? Was that I've never seen those before. I'm just kidding. Yeah, football so season. Silly. I know it's football season, and I always laugh because with hockey, their names are so hard to say by the time the play is over. I just got done with the name. So. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, Texas Tech right now in Kansas are playing. Kansas went up by a touchdown. Texas rises to second in the BCS standings. The Longhorns passing the Crimson Tide. Well, if your name starts with R, you're battling for a position in the American League wildcard race. Red Sox, Rangers, and Rays all right there. Entering today's game this afternoon, the Rangers had dropped two straight, and they were looking for a win and just like uh, kind of like ESPN does we we're gonna have a game of the week right we, we do and we have two it's so big we're gonna have two games of the week we're gonna have Allen at Longview mm -hmm. and then um, Tyler Lee at Lufkin so we'll be there with live reports all right thanks. all right thanks Tam the Texans have a Monday night game they play tomorrow and then high school football we have all the brackets and playoff information on our website uh. Well, Cujo Pride is alive. John Tyler broke a school record this afternoon, scoring the most number of points ever in a single season with a 37-24 win. Blows could have beat Dallas tonight. Well, they started their season in dramatic fashion last night. And let me explain how big of a win this was. Allen is the defending class 5A state champs, ranked number two in Texas. Reporting for Cowboys Trading Camp, Tamara Jolie, KTK, NBC.com. Everyone loved Martellus Bennett. He had just come off of a fantastic rookie season. He posted goofy videos on YouTube. He had all the reporters laughing, including me. Now Jerry Jones says it's time for Bennett to grow up. We'll take Who Dat Nation to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Oh, they're absolutely adorable. I would love to party with them. Well, when we come back, time for some hoops action. 74 to UConn. The Longhorns gave up a 10-point lead in the second half. Jerome Dyson scored 32 points for UConn, and they outscored Texas 50 days after a John Tyler High School teacher was fatally stabbed in a classroom. The Lions took the field last night and perhaps the most emotional game of their young lives. Let us pause for a moment of silence to remember our beloved teacher, Mr. Henry. Sometimes, as odd as it sounds, the football field beyond the lights, screaming fans, and cheerleaders is a peaceful place. It's where at times, like Friday night, communities rebuild itself around the team, even after enduring the most tragic of situations. You just, you just gotta fight through it, you know. Uh, he definitely was a, a faculty member and, a, and, a, and, a, and that type of deal, so, you know, we talk to our kids about being focused and fight through adversity all the time, so it's just a part of life. Undefeated on the season and gaining national attention, John Tyler High School in East Texas had every reason to give up. 
quit in a game against Louisville. Just two days earlier, these football players, coaches, and students had to endure a nightmare. A beloved teacher at the school, Todd Henry, was fatally stabbed, allegedly by a student. The situation so intense, even John Tyler's coach, a strong former college football standout, had trouble speaking about the incident. It's definitely been a hard week for uh, uh, the whole John Tyler family, you know. You know, our sympathy definitely goes out to the uh, Henry family and their loss. As a musician, Mr. Henry regularly brought people together to smile, to laugh, inspiring others to do what they love. During a moment of silence before the game, hundreds paused to remember his life and his lessons. You know, we talk to our kids about life and, and then you, you go through adversity and that type of deal. And uh, like I said, luckily tonight, they, they showed the uh, adversity and, and, and showed a bright light for John Tyler High School. Once they took the field, John Tyler closed out a tearful week by turning in their most dominating performance. The coach Rush says the game was about much more than football. It was about remembering a man whom possessed skills we can all use, passion, leadership, and a daily desire to make others smile through God-given talent. Coach says there's no telling how the season will end up, but he hopes in some way his team and the game of football will help bring some normalcy or healing to the community. You know, it was quite inspiring to talk to Coach last night because here he is trying to get his guys ready and, and comforting them, but, you know, he also lost a friend and everything, and right. it's been a hard situation for them all, so our thoughts, of course, are with them. Um, you know, college football, obviously, today, we'll post all those scores on there. I just thought it was really important to get that story and share their story. Right, yeah, and it is important, you know, for these kids to have that sense of normalcy, like he was saying, you know, after a lot of tragedy, people sometimes, you know, want to give up, and, and something like that is, it's good just to keep going. And, you know, you hear over and over so many times how communities do pull together um, in athletic events mm -hmm. because it's a chance to smile and get out there, and 